Welcome back, everyone. Today's deep dive is going to be um, a bit of sex. Okay. We're going to be tackling a whole bunch of vocabulary words, all focused on bugs. Sounds fun. It is fun. The words all come from this article I found called 15 Vocabulary Words for Insects and Bugs. Hmm. And it's really aimed at English language learners. But mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of cool stuff in here for everyone, honestly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just thinking about you know, describing the natural world around us. Right. And some of these insects we're going to be talking about are just incredible. Yeah, I agree. So let's just jump right in. The article starts off with some of the, I guess, the most common insects, mm. you know, the kind that everyone's probably seen at some point. Right. The familiar faces. Yeah, exactly. We've got ants, bees, butterflies. Mm. But even with these common insects, there are some pretty interesting facts here. Things I didn't even know. Oh, I'm sure. Like, for example, uh, with ants, they're often seen as a symbol of cooperation, right? Mm -hmm. Working together in colonies. Right. Always busy. But the article mentions that they can lift things many times their own weight. Oh, yeah. It's incredible how strong they are for their size. It really is. And, you know, that whole idea of cooperation, it's not just important for ants, but for entire ecosystems. Exactly. Insects play such vital roles, you wow. know, from pollination to decomposition. Right, and that affects the entire food chain. Absolutely. Everything is connected. Now, speaking of food chains, did you know ladybugs are like a gardener's best friend? Oh, yeah. They're great for pest control. Because they eat those little aphids that can destroy plants. Exactly. They're like tiny little superheroes for your garden. That's a good way to put it. Okay, so we've talked about ants, bees, ladybugs, all pretty familiar. Yeah, those are some good starter bugs. But this list gets even more interesting, trust me. Oh, I believe you. I'm ready for it. Okay, so we're moving on from the familiar insects like ants and ladybugs. Right, those are kind of the basics. Yeah, exactly. Now we're getting into some insects with some really special features, you know, adaptations that help them survive. I love that kind of stuff. It's yeah. amazing how evolution has shaped these creatures. It really is. So let's start with beetles. I've always thought they look so cool with their hard, shiny wings. Yeah, those are actually called elytra, and they're like protective covers for their delicate hind wings underneath. So it's like armor. Exactly. It helps them avoid predators and also navigate different environments. Wow, that's so cool. And the article mentions that there are tons of different kinds of beetles. Oh, yeah. There are like over 400,000 species that have been identified. That's a lot of beetles. Some of them must be pretty weird. Oh, definitely. They come in all shapes and sizes. Some are tiny like the ladybug we talked about. Right. And then you've got some that are huge like the goliath beetle. I've never even heard of that one. They can grow to be over four inches long. Wow, that's bigger than my hand. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Okay, so moving on to another amazing insect, the dragonfly. Oh, yeah, those are incredible flyers. They're like little helicopters zipping around so fast. And it's all thanks to their wings. They have two pairs that work independently. So that's how they can, like, hover and change direction so quickly. Exactly, and that makes them expert predators, too. Oh, yeah. The article mentioned they catch insects in midair. Yeah, their large compound eyes give them a super wide field of vision. So they can see everything that's going on around them. And they can process that information way faster than we can. It's like they have super senses. It's pretty amazing. Okay, now for a complete change of pace. Let's talk about crickets. The chirping masters of the night. Yeah, their sound is so relaxing yeah. You know, on a summer evening. Did you know that it's actually only the males that chirp? Really? What for? It's all about attracting females. Yeah. Each species has its own unique chirping pattern. So it's like their own special love song. Exactly. It helps them find the right mate. That's so cool. Oh. Speaking of sounds, though, we can't forget about the mosquito. <sighs> yes, the tiny vampires. They can be such a nuisance. But they do play an important role in the ecosystem, believe it or not. Really? How so? Well, they're a food source for a lot of animals like birds and bats. Oh, right. I guess it makes sense. And their larvae, which live in water, they help break down organic matter. Hmm. I never thought about it like that. But yeah, there's always more to these insects than meets the eye. So the article says that it's only the female mosquitoes that bite, right? Yeah, and they do it to get the protein they need for their eggs. And they're so good at finding us. They use a combination of senses, like our body heat, carbon dioxide, even certain scents. It's like they have a sixth sense for finding people. Pretty much. <laughs> Okay, so we've talked about crickets, mosquitoes. Let's move on to moths. This is like the nighttime version of butterflies. Right? Exactly. And they're famous for their attraction to light. I've always wondered why they do that. It's still a bit of a mystery to scientists, 
But one theory is that they use the moon and stars for navigation. Oh, so the artificial lights confuse them. That's the idea. Yeah. It's like they get lost in the bright lights of the big city. I feel that. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered some pretty fascinating insects in this group. We've talked about beetles, dragonflies, crickets, mosquitoes, moths. Wow, that's a lot of bugs. And we're not done yet. We've still got one more group to go. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> what other surprises are in store for us? Okay, so this is it. The final group of insects in our vocabulary deep dive. Then it's a good one. We've got some really unique creatures to talk about. I'm intrigued. Let's hear it. All right, so first up, we have the firefly. You know those magical little insects that light up the night? Oh, yeah, they're so cool. I remember seeing oh. them when I was a kid. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing sight, and they actually use their light to communicate. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, especially for attracting mates, it's like their own little love language. That's so romantic. The article mentioned that different species of fireflies have different flash patterns. Exactly. It's like they have their own Morse code so they can find the right mate. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Imagine walking through a field at night and all these little lights are blinking around you. It would be magical. It really would. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to another fascinating insect, the cicada. Uh, yes, the masters of patience. What do you mean? Well, they spend years underground as nymphs. Years? Seriously? Yep, and then they emerge all at once for a few weeks of crazy, noisy mating. Wow, that's wild. It's a great example of synchronized behavior in nature. So they all come out at the same time so they can overwhelm predators. Exactly. It increases their chances of survival and reproduction. That's a pretty clever strategy. Yeah. The article said some species can stay underground for 13 or even 17 years. It's true. Can you imagine living in darkness for that long? I don't even think I could handle a week. Yeah, it's a pretty incredible feat of nature. Okay, so now for an insect that's not quite as beloved, the wasp. Yeah, those guys have a bit of a bad reputation. The article mentioned that they can sting multiple times. No. Which is definitely not something I want to experience. Yeah, it's best to give them their space. But it's oh. important to remember that they sting defensively. So they're not just out to get us. No, <laughs> they're just trying to protect themselves and their nests. That makes sense. Yeah. And even though they can be scary, they do play an important role in the ecosystem, right? Oh, absolutely. They help control populations of other insects, and some species even pollinate plants. So they're not all bad. Not at all. And finally, we have the aphid... Tiny but mighty. Aren't those the ones that can destroy plants? Yep, they're like little vampires sucking the sap from leaves and stems. That does sound good. Yeah, they can be a real problem for gardeners and farmers. But I guess they also have their place in the food chain. Of course. Everything is connected. Ladybugs love to eat aphids. So it all balances out in the end. Exactly. That's one of the main things I hope people take away from this deep dive. That even the smallest creatures have a role to play. And that we can learn so much from observing the natural world around us. Well said. This has been an amazing journey through the world of insects. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I definitely did. I feel like I've learned so much. And now I can impress all my friends with my bug knowledge. Haha. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be very impressed. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. We'll see you next time.